एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू योर फेवरेट चैनल बाय जूस क्लास नाइन एंड टेन अचीवर्स ऑल राइट गाइस बैलेंसिंग केमिकल इक्वेशंस इज अ की केमिस्ट्री स्किल बट हे आर यू फाइंडिंग इट डिफिकल्ट टू बैलेंस इवन इजी केमिकल इक्वेशंस If your answer is yes, then this video is just for you. So I'll walk you through the easiest method, the shortcut method to balance any chemical equations in just 30 seconds. Right now, when you will be understanding the method, you might take five to ten minutes to get the hang of it. But once you will practice based on this method, when you use this method, you will be able to solve. You will be able to balance any equation. correctly and quickly so let's get started let me share the golden rule with you so the golden rule is a b c d rule which says anybody can do balancing so let's get started what do we have here well we have an equation over here we have a chemical equation right pcl5 plus h2o giving us h3po4 plus hcl now based on this abcd rule the first step is to write the coefficients so there you go we've mentioned a here b here c here and d over here now the next step is to write the elements involved in this reaction we see phosphorus is there chlorine hydrogen and oxygen so there you go we've written all the elements involved now the most important step is to equate the number of atoms for this just follow this simple step okay number of atoms into coefficient that's it guys just do this and you will be able to equate everything over here let's get started number of atoms into coefficient you need to remember this that's it okay let's apply this for phosphorus on the reactant side number of atom is 1 and what's the coefficient next to it coefficient is a so i'm writing 1a equal to now come to the product side on the product side how many atoms of phosphorus are there 1 so i'm writing 1 and the coefficient is c so there you go that is the first equation 1a is equal to 1c we will be applying the same rule we will be following the same steps for chlorine now all right for chlorine how many atoms are there on the reactant side five and what about the coefficient that is a on the product side we can see that there is just one chlorine atom and the coefficient is d so 5a equal to 1d well done guys you're half way done half way through let's move on and now write this for hydrogen on the reactant side what do we have to do number of atoms into coefficient so for hydrogen i see two atoms over here so i've written two and the coefficient is b on the product side i see three hydrogen atoms here so i've written three coefficient is c but hey i also see another hydrogen atom over here so i put a plus sign one atom is there therefore one and the coefficient is d therefore i'm writing d over here this makes this as 2b equal to 3c plus 1d and here is the third equation finally we are going to do the same we are going to apply the same rule and we will write the equation for oxygen now i know that you know the way now all right number of oxygen atoms on the reactant side clearly this is just one atom right coefficient is b on the product side four oxygen atoms and coefficient is c so 1b equal to 4c that's your fourth equation now all these four equations that you see over here these are the main equations if you've reached this step i am 100% sure that you will be able to balance the equation correctly now what do you have to do note over here which is the largest number i see 1 i see 2 3 4 5 well this is no rocket science 5 is the largest number right now once you identify the largest number once you figure out which is the largest number then the coefficient next to the largest number the largest number is 5 and the coefficient next to 5 is a you will let 
a b equal to 1. I'll repeat this step for you. Figure out the largest number and the coefficient next to the largest number will be taken as 1. In this case, it is a. So, a is equal to 1. We're supposing this, we're assuming this, right? Let a be equal to 1. We don't know what b is, c is or d is, but we have the equations with us and these equations are going to help us, right? So, 1 a equal to 1 c basically means a is equal to c and what is a? a is 1. We just figured this out. We just said that let a be equal to 1. If a is 1, c will also be equal to 1 and there you go. You have figured out c as well. Let's come to this equation now. 5 times a is equal to 1 d. 5 times a and what is the value of a? That is 1 will be equal to 1d or I can simply write this as d. So, d is equal to 5. So, I am writing a 5 over here. We know what is a, we know what is c, we know what is d. We are left with b and we are left with two equations. We can solve any of these equations to figure out b. Let's pick up the simple one then. b is equal to 4c, 1b equal to 4c which means I can write this as b is equal to 4c. What is the value of C? It is 1, right? So, B is equal to 4 into 1, that is 4. And there you go, I have written a 4 over here. In fact, you can cross check this value using this equation as well. So, 2 times B would mean 2 times 4 is equal to 3 times C, that means 3 times 1 plus 1 times D, that is 1 into 5. Let's cross check this. 8 is equal to 3 plus 5. 8 is equal to 8. Yes, that's very much true, right? That means we have solved the equation properly. Now you know A, B, C, D, all 4, right? Just put the value over here. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 4, C is equal to 1, D is equal to 5. There you go. You have just balanced the chemical equation. Cross check your answer based on this table. Count the number of atoms of every element on the reactant and the product side. So, for phosphorus, we see that one atom is there on the reactant side and one atom is there on the product side. Sorted, very much balanced. Well, the next element is chlorine. For chlorine, we see five chlorine atoms on the reactant side and we see five chlorine atoms on the product side. So, this is also balanced. Next, we have hydrogen. Alright, for hydrogen, we have a 4 into 2, that means 8 atoms on the reactant side and we have 3 atoms here plus 5 atoms here. So, 3 plus 5 makes it 8. So, yes, this is also very much balanced. Finally, coming to oxygen, how many oxygen atoms are there on the reactant side? We see that 4 oxygen atoms are there on the reactant side and 4 oxygen atoms are there on the product side which means this equation is verified, it is very much balanced, hence it is following the law of conservation of mass. There you go, this is your balanced chemical equation. Alright guys, there is also a link being given to you in the description box for a free trial class. Go ahead, try this out as well. And for more such tricks, for more such amazing content, like this video, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Alright guys, this is all for today. You know the drill now, you know the trick now. Now you can balance any chemical equation in just 30 seconds. All the best.